Welcome to the last video in landscape design. Today I'm going to reveal my final garden plan. If you just found this video and haven't done the previous videos, I strongly suggest you go back and start at number one. This video isn't going to make a lot of sense unless you've done the previous videos. You can get to part one of landscape design by going to the end of this video and I'll put a link there to the whole series of landscape videos. This is our garden design process. We're now in the last step of the process. We've got our preliminary plans created and we're gonna select the best of those and we're going to use it to create a final plan. We're going to do that by fine tuning our decisions and making our drawings a little more accurate. It's important that we get the size of everything correct. Even something as simple as a pathway. Now it's time to decide is that pathway three feet wide or five feet wide? Because it affects the design. Is that pathway made up of grass or crushed stone or pavers? All of those decisions now have to be made. And then we'll add those to the final drawing. Now up to this point I've suggested you do all your drawings on a single piece of paper and that's a good idea up to this point. But now I'm going to suggest that you go to a bigger piece of paper. In my case I'm using each square to be equal to two feet and it would be better if I go to each square equaling one foot. It does mean I have to use more paper and in my case I actually have to take four pieces and glue them together. But by going to a larger format like that you're going to get more accuracy in your drawing. And that's actually very important. For the benefit of the course I'm going to stick to one piece of paper. Mostly because I need one piece to fit into the landscape design workbook. But if I was doing this for myself, I would make a much larger drawing. So here are my three preliminary plans. One based on circles, one on rectangles, and one on triangles and trapezoids. I have to pick one out of these. I think the design using rectangles would make the nicest looking garden. It's very formal, very neat, low maintenance, but I think it would fit this space so well. It's not the design I would pick because I'm the type of gardener that likes lots of plants. And quite honestly, the formal garden is a bit boring to me. But if that's your style, I think it would be an excellent choice. The design I actually like the best is the one that uses triangles and trapezoids. It's a really interesting garden and people who come to it for the first time will be blown away. It's so different than anything else you see in the neighborhood. And if it was me choosing a garden style for me, that's the one I would pick. Unfortunately, I'm picking a design for the purpose of the course, and I want it to appeal to a large audience. And I think most gardeners would pick the design using curves and circles. It's still a very interesting design. It's a great layout that gets people into the garden, it has a lot of interesting things in it, but I think it's the design that most people will pick. So that's the one I'm going to use for the rest of this course. Let's have a look at my final plan. At the back corner, I've decided to go with a gazebo. The round shape complements the garden, and it looks very different than those straight walls heading towards the corner. In fact, I really don't like that back corner, so I'm going to put a shrub in there to try and hide it and soften that corner. The gazebo will be made with vertical posts so that it remains quite open. It's going to be raised up about a foot, and there's a couple of reasons for doing that. One is that a raised platform adds interest to the garden, but I have another reason for doing that. If you remember, this back corner slopes down towards the wall. We can't change that slope. That slope is there to drain water away from the property and out to the street. And in fact, the local bylaws make it illegal to change that swale. We have to keep it. By raising the gazebo up, I can use footings to make the gazebo floor level without affecting the slope of the ground. We have a couple options for the roof. I could make it completely solid but I think that will be too much shade. I think the ideal solution is an open roof with a lot of cross beams 
So we get a good amount of shade, but we still have lots of light coming in. I'm going to grow vines up the posts, and at least one of those posts will have a grapevine. And that will go over top of the roof and add some extra shading and interest to the whole gazebo. The area is going to be made large enough so that we can put a table and several chairs there. It should be large enough so that a family of four can go out and have a meal there. Area B, that space between the gazebo and the house, is going to be filled up with tall shrubs. I want a wall of shrubs that pretty much hides the gazebo from the house. These will be blooming deciduous shrubs, similar to a lilac. Lilacs are very fragrant. They give you a very nice flower early in the year. And then the bushes become quite thick with leaves. And that's what I want here. I want the gazebo to be hidden from the house. I'm going to run a hydro line from the back of the house out to the gazebo. Now that's the first thing that will have to be done before any other construction starts. In this area, that line has to be buried about four feet deep. It will bring 120 volts to the gazebo. And I've marked that with a little E with a circle around it. Using that outlet, we'll be able to light the gazebo so that it can be used at night. It will also run the pump for the waterfall. And I'll add extra lighting on the shrub in area B. I'll see this wall of shrubs that are lit up. The water feature will be a small pond and waterfall, but it will be designed to look as natural as possible. It's always hard to try and put a waterfall on a flat property. It just never really looks right. The pond and waterfall will be positioned so that the raised area for the waterfall will be at the back, and it will be mostly hidden by the shrubs in area B. That kind of solves this problem of having a waterfall in the middle of a flat property. The reason I'm adding the waterfall is to add some noise into the garden. I want to try to muffle the sound of the cars going past the property. The other reason for having a waterfall is that when you're sitting on the deck, you'll be able to hear it, but you're not really going to be able to see it because it's kind of hidden behind the shrubbery. That's going to draw you out into the garden to go towards that waterfall. The back fence is quite visible so far, and it's kind of ugly. So I want to do something to hide it. And there's a couple of options. Where I've put the D, I could very easily put a really nice statue. And that will tend to draw the eye away from the ugly fence. If the gardener is really into art, that's probably a good choice. Another option is to plant shrubs along that back border. And I think that's actually the better option. Let's hide the fence with a bunch of shrubbery. And maybe we can combine the two. A bunch of shrubs with a statue in the middle of the shrub. That's the best of both worlds. Section E, the area along the property line, will become our shade garden. I'm going to get three large deciduous trees and bring them in and plant them in that area. That will give us some immediate shade. It will separate us from the neighbors and provide an area to have a woodland garden. The walkways will be made with quarter inch irregular stone edged with brick. This design is fairly informal and will match the rest of the garden. Now the reason I'm using quarter inch stone is that in my experience that's the one that will have the least amount of weeds. If you go with something finer like crushed stone or screenings, that's a perfect weed bed and I wouldn't use that. Go with larger stone. I also don't like pea gravel. Although it makes a nice sound as people walk on it, walking on it is actually more difficult. The quarter inch crushed stone packs down nicely and gives you a really nice surface. We're still going to put our vegetable garden where I placed the eye, but there is an issue there that we haven't really discussed yet. We have that swale coming along the wall and we can't take that out. What I propose is to build a slightly raised wall using bricks, but leaving a space between that wall and the brick wall. Water is really important for the vegetable garden, and we have a handy tap to use right there. But in an effort to conserve water, what I'm planning to do is to put a rain barrel at the base of the downspout, which is right at the back corner. So we'll have a rain barrel right in our vegetable garden, and we can use that for watering. I'm going to put a second rain barrel at the other downspout, 
at the opposite side of the garden. Then I'm going to connect these two rain barrels with a hose. What that does is in effect give me two rain barrels in my vegetable garden. As I drain down the barrel that's at the vegetable garden, it will suck water from the other barrel and they'll both go down together. That gives me lots of water for watering my garden. The entrance to the garden will still use that wrought iron metal fence, but I've decided to make it a little more interesting. I'm going to add a little arbor around the gate. It adds some interest to the property and it gives me another place to grow some vines. I love those clematis, so this would be a perfect place for four clematis growing up at the arbor. As far as the deck goes at the back of the house, I've decided to make it mostly rectangular, but I think we'll cut off the corners just to give it a bit of a rounded feeling. I still like the idea of coming out of the house and stepping right on the deck. So we're going to raise this deck up. In addition to making it more convenient for coming in and out of the house, it also does a couple other things for us. One is that it's going to make it very easy to put a garden hose underneath it and connect my two rain barrels. We live in a cold climate and in winter those rain barrels have to be emptied or they'll freeze and crack. Same with the hose, but by having this deck raised up, it'll be really easy to just lay that hose on the ground. I don't have to do anything special to hide it. On the side that's facing the neighbors, I'm still going to put some sort of structure up there and put vines on it. I want to hide that side of the deck from the neighbors. The side of the property is very narrow and there really isn't room to put a shed or anything out there for tools. But one thing we can do is we can build something underneath the deck. It's only three feet tall, but that's big enough to put some sort of a cart there that you can pull out and get at your tools. So there'll be some storage there for gardening material. There you have it. That's my final design. And I'm pretty happy with it. I think this garden is very functional. It's relatively low maintenance, but it does have room for a lot of plantings. It's a gardener's garden. And once those plants mature a bit, I think this will be a great looking garden. I hope you're really happy with the design you're creating, and I wish you all the best when you implement it. I know you're going to have one of the best gardens on the street. This brings us to the end of this series of videos, but there's a lot more to learn about garden design. And I've created a number of other videos, and I put them all together in my garden design playlist. And I'll put a link to that at the top right hand corner. Enjoy the journey designing your own garden.